happy day students today we are going to start new chapter called heat transfer now heat transfer that we are going to study uh, in class 12th or in class 11th or for neat preparation or for je preparation three modes are there conduction convection and radiation okay in that also convection we don't study much so it's the conduction and radiation that are important for us okay now what is the meaning of conduction conduction means is when the heat flows from one part of the body to the other part of the body due to the involvement of molecules okay but the molecules do not move from one point to the other then the heat transfer is called uh, the mode of heat transfer is called conduction now how it is if suppose i take an example suppose i have a wire or you can say a rod okay this is a rod here and you started heating this part okay you started heating this part of the rod so what will happen the molecules here gets heat right and before that what the molecules are doing at its place because there is also a room temperature at a room temperature every particle of this rod is having same amount of kinetic energy okay and what these molecules are doing basically they have a certain place called equilibrium position and they are vibrating about it like this every particle is having same amplitude of vibration why because everyone is having same kinetic energy right so their amplitude of vibration is same but what you are doing now you have started heating one end so what will happen to these particles which are here the temperature will increase first and they will start vibrating with more amplitude right when they are going to vibrate with more amplitude what will happen is they are going to collide with the next layer of molecule because they are going to displace more from their equilibrium position so they are going to collide with the next layer when they collide they transfer some amount of energy to the next layer okay because next layer particles are also vibrating actually so these particle comes and collide with them passes some amount of energy okay so that they are also vibrating now with little more amplitude in that way the energy will be transferred to the third one then the fourth one then the fifth one then the sixth one then the seventh one okay but who is having the maximum energy this particle the first particle and who is having the least energy the last particle so what will happen because of that because of that is the first particle will have the largest amplitude of vibration and the last one will have the lowest still you keep on heating them so when you keep on heating them you obviously know that the first particle will be the hottest and this will be the lowest temperature as the heat is passing from here to here okay so this way heat is getting transferred through collisions because this layer of particle this layer of molecules are not going here but still the amount of energy is getting passed so this process is called conduction in which the molecules do not move and do not actively move in the direction of the heat transfer okay but still the heat is being transferred from one place to another okay are you able to understand mass doesn't move but the heat is moving molecules are involved or not yes they are involved but they are not moving along the direction of the heat that process is called conduction okay now what is happening at this end a and what is happening at this end b when you are continuously heating it the temperature here or the kinetic energy of the particles here is continuously increasing and here also the kinetic energy and temperature of the particle is increasing continuously because the heat is coming from here so this state okay in which the energy is getting passed and the temperature of every section a as well as b is changing okay that state is called unsteady state or transient state okay that state is called unsteady state or transient state unsteady state or transient state right but what state we are having or we are going to study we are going to study about steady state okay 
Now, what is steady state? Let's try and understand that. Okay, you are heating from here, but temperature of A is not changing. TA has become constant. And TB is also constant. So, whatever amount of heat you are giving, it is just transferring from one end to the other end. Nothing is being absorbed. When it will happen? Now, we know that if this rod only we are talking, its length is constant. Okay? Its length is constant. It's not going to increase beyond certain values. Okay? So, its length more or less is constant only. So, if the length is constant, we know that throughout the length, there will be certain number of molecules. Okay? We know that molecules will be, uh, if suppose I say, this is one layer. So, here some molecules are there. On this plane, if suppose we are going to cut this rod with a plane, on that plane certain molecules will be there. Like this, there can be infinite planes, but whatever the number is, but it will be difficult for us to count, but it will be finite number. Okay? So, that finite number is there. Now, what is going to happen? Every one of these are actually oscillating like this. Right? With this is oscillating with the maximum amplitude, this is oscillating with minimum amplitude. Now, once they have taken the energy and they have started vibrating in a particular amplitude, you cannot increase it beyond it. What I am trying to say is, if suppose, even if the energy is coming from here, that energy they have to absorb and they have to use it in the form of energy of vibration. But since there is no space left for them to increase the amplitude, they don't absorb that energy. Okay, it's not like us, like even if we don't require, we grab the things, right or not? But it's not with the molecules. They will take that much amount of energy only, which is there for them to use. So since they are already used the maximum displacement from the mean position, they will not be using the energy further. So, that state we call as steady state because they are not going to absorb any amount of heat. Temperature at A is constant, temperature at B is constant. Whatever amount of energy you are giving, that is being transferred from one end to another end. This is called which state? Steady state. Now, after knowing the steady state, we are going to find out how much actually is energy passing from one end to the other end. Okay. So, let us see then. Suppose I am going to say that as power transferred, okay, that is rate of heat flow, dq by dt, okay, you can call it as power, I would say that rate of heat flow, dq by dt, okay, now that is proportional to what? How much heat is being transferred from this end to this end is proportional to what? It is proportional to first of all the temperature difference between the two, it is proportional to Ta minus Tb. Okay, more the temperature difference, more it will be passed. Okay, always remember steady state is not thermal equilibrium. Thermal equilibrium means what? The temperature of two ends becomes same. Then it's thermal equilibrium in which no heat will be passed. But this is steady state in which temperatures are constant, not same. Okay, so dq by dt is proportional to Ta minus Tv. That means more the temperature difference, more heat will be passing. Okay. Second thing, this dq by dt is also proportional to area. Okay. This is also proportional to area. More the area are there, more molecules will be involved, more oscillation will be there, more collision will be there, more heat will be transferred. Okay. And this dq by dt is inversely proportional to length, length of the rod. Why? Because more the length is there, okay, the rate transfer from this end to this end will decrease. Right? Because there are more molecules, more molecules are going to absorb the heat. Okay? So, a rate of heat transfer can be less. Combine all, so we can say that dq by dt, remove the proportionality also, we can write it as Ka. Ta minus Tb, I am writing as delta T by L. 
this is the formula of heat being conducted from one end to the other end. Here K is called coefficient of thermal conductivity. Coefficient of thermal conductivity. Okay. Now, most of the questions that we are going to solve are based on this only steady state. But if it is unsteady state, then also we can write dq by dt. What is it? dq by dt equal to k a. This we write as dt by dx. Okay. Delta t by L we write as dt by dx. This dt by dx is called temperature gradient. That means rate of fall of temperature per unit length. Okay. What is this? This is temperature gradient. Okay. Now, once you know that this is dq by dt k a delta t by L, now we can compare this conduction with electrical conduction also. There also we have seen dq by dt. What was that? Rate of flow of charge. Okay. That rate of flow of charge we used to call electric current. This dq by dt we call as heat current. Remember that. Okay. That dq by dt was what? Electric current. Here this dq by dt we call as heat current. Okay, so we are going to study this conduction in the same way as we studied current. Okay, so let's see the comparison right now. Electric current I dq by dt. Okay, and heat current IH is dq by dt. Now I am going to compare both, okay, just see that. Okay. Now, this we, are, we write as delta V by R. What is delta V? Delta V is potential difference. Okay, and what this R is? Resistance. Electric resistance. Okay, here I am saying this is delta T by, what is it? L by K A. So, L by K A. Okay. Now, here also, I am just going to write this as delta V is fine, resistance, right? Resistance we used to write as rho L by A. Remember that? Rho L by A. Now, what is rho? Rho is resistivity. L is length of conductor by area of conductor. This rho we can write in terms of conductivity also. We write rho as 1 by sigma. So, if I am writing that, then this formula becomes L by sigma A. I am writing it here. L by sigma A. Now see this. This is potential difference. This is temperature difference. This we are calling as electric resistance. What is it? L by conductivity into area. Here you see L by conductivity into area. So this term we write as thermal resistance. This is temperature difference and this becomes thermal resistance. So what is the formula of thermal resistance here? It is L by Ka. And what was for electrical resistance? L by sigma A. Okay. So, from now onwards, whatever the problems are going to come, we are going to solve it with thermal resistance. All in the same way as we solved in current electricity. Okay. Let's see. I'll show you. In this one also, we can say there are resistances in series and resistances in parallel. Resistance in series and resistance in parallel. So, see then how we can do that. Okay, so let's see resistances in series. Resistances in series basically means is we have two rods, you can say, or two wires which are connected in series. Okay, so it's like this. Suppose I am taking it in this way. Okay, let's say this is L1, this is L2. Okay, in steady state, remember that we have only steady state in our syllabus. We don't talk about unsteady state at all. Only steady state. So, in steady state, we know that whatever heat is being transferred from here, same heat is going to move from here. That means, as we take in current electricity also in series connection, what is common? Current. Here also, IH. IH is same. They are in series. Okay. 
IH and IH. Now what we can do? We can say that this particular medium, its thermal conductivity is K1, its thermal conductivity is K2. Area we can take same. If you want, you can take that as well different. The area is same. Now since they are in resistance, I will write R is equal to R1 plus R2. Okay. Then R is what? Say L by K. So L1 by K1A plus L2 by K2A. This is equal to R. R is what? L1 plus L2 by K. What is K? Effective thermal conductivity constant. So K into A. A you can cancel over here. So what we are getting here? L1 K2 plus L2 K1 by K1 K2 and L1 plus L2 by K. So what is K value? Just check. K value is L1 plus L2 K1 K2 by L1 K2 plus L2 K1. This is K value. Now if suppose IH you want to find. What will be IH value? IH will be delta T by R. Okay, they can ask you effective value of thermal conductivity also. They can ask you IH also. Now delta T is what? We will say TA minus TB by effective value of R. Now effective value of R will be L by K actually. So L1 plus L2 into K. Now this K. Okay. K into area. And this will become IH for us. Okay. Sometimes they ask you that what is the temperature of this middle section C. How to do then? So we know that IH is same in both cases. So we can say TA minus TB by R1 will be equal to TB minus TC by R2. From here, we can find out what is the temperature of C. Sorry, I have written it wrong. TA minus TC and here TC minus TB. This is C and this is B. So TA minus TC by R1 is IH here. TC minus TB by R2 is this one. So with this way, we can find out what is the temperature of the junction. Okay. So remember that first, question can be asked from you, what is the thermal conductivity effective? They can ask you IH value and they can ask you the temperature of the section. See now resistance is in parallel. As it's we did in uh, current electricity, same way this we can solve here. So if we say that these are the two rods, we are connecting in parallel. Okay. What is common in current electricity whenever we are talking about parallel? Potential difference across was same. Here also, if this end is A and this end is B, whatever temperature will be here, like Ta and here Tb, that is constant for both. Okay? And this is length. This we can say K1, this we can say K2. A1, A2, if you want, take different or you whatever is the given thing, we can take accordingly. So, 1 by R will be what? 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 or R is equal to R1, R2 by R1 plus R2. Now, what is R1? We all know that. L1 by K1A plus L2 by K2A. 